Hi, my name's Katie and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to share with you my newly set up bioactive enclosures for my bearded dragon and eastern blue tongue skink. As with any closed ecosystem, it can take a bit of fine tuning to get the balance right, so these setups are experimental in nature. However, I've done my research into the basics to try to set them up for success as much as possible and I wanted to share them with you just for interest sake or just in case you would like to give a bioactive enclosure a try yourself. I'm going to run through the substrate I used in the enclosures, the lights, the plants and the key difference between the two biotypes. I originally tried to set up a tropical bioactive enclosure for my blue tongue skink but it didn't really work out because the humidity needs for the plants in there were just too high and it didn't feel right not having the blue tongue skink being completely happy or the plants being completely happy. So I'm really glad that I changed to a native setup because I actually like the look a lot better anyway. And you'll notice too that I used to have a background in there. This is something that I impulsively bought and it was kind of expensive so I keep trying to use it and it keeps not really working out because to use it properly you would really need to silicone it onto the back of the tank and it's not really something I'm willing to do or to commit to. So I've tried to put it in there and stuff just tends to get behind it and it's quite bulky so it just hasn't really worked out. But I think that's good news anyway because I think that you'll see that it looks nice even without a background so you don't necessarily need one to have a really cool looking bioactive or natural looking bioactive setup in my opinion anyway. For my bearded dragon her setup was very practical so she had everything she needed and a basking platform, UVB, light and whatnot, but it was kind of ugly. It was just reptile carpet, very, very plain. And even though she was healthy, I think that it just looks a lot nicer now how it is with the bioactive setup. So the first thing I'll start off talking about is substrate. So the substrate is a little bit different for both of them because they have different humidity needs. Eastern blue tongue skinks like it around about 40 to 50% and they can go all the way up to 70% and plus, but not for long periods of time, unlike tropical um, skinks like ones from Indonesia that really like it being in that high range humidity a lot of the time. Then you've got bitter dragons and they live in dry environments and the humidity they tolerate is more like 20 to 40%, so quite low. And it doesn't take much to get to that point naturally when you live somewhere like in Brisbane so it can be a little bit difficult keeping the humidity level low enough. Because of different humidity levels means just tweaking the substrates a little bit. For my blue tongue skink I have in the substrate a mixture of predominantly cypress bark, coconut husk, sphagnum moss and then just a little bit of charcoal mixed in there. So the way that this works is the cypress mulch is good for the plants and the worms, the cleanup crew I've got in there. The sphagnum moss will actually hold on to water to help raise the humidity level a little bit. And then the charcoal just helps to kind of take some of the excess water out. But then what I also have for my blue tongue skink on the bottom layer is what we call a drainage layer. And so that's just comprised of some charcoal and then ceramic media. And the purpose of the drainage layer, you normally see these in humid um, tropical setup terrariums or vivariums because they have a lot of water constantly going in there. And if you don't have a drainage layer, what happens is that water just builds up on the bottom layer of the soil. And if water sits in soil too long, the soil gets really rotten and smelly and it's not good for the health of the ecosystem. So that's what the purpose of a drainage layer is for. I have one in my Blue Tongue Skinks enclosure, even though it's not gonna be overly wet or humid in there because I had it set up for the tropical enclosure before. But I think that if you can do it, it's not a bad option. It doesn't take much, just some charcoal, a net over the top. I used just some aquarium filter bags um, to put the charcoal in for mine. And then you put all of that substrate that I mentioned before on top of it. Now, for Bearded Dragon, very similar. So also cypress mulch and also um, charcoal, but more charcoal mixed into it. No sphagnum moss because I don't want anything that's holding on to water in there. And then in addition, um, the coconut husk and a little bit of um, sand, of red desert sand 
um, mixed in, but mainly on top. I put that for more like aesthetic reasons to give it kind of that red deserty look. And of course, there's so many different ways to do it. You could do whatever you want for your enclosure, but it's just good to think about how much humidity or how much water um, your substrate is going to hold and what your lizard's requirements are to then kind of tweak it to what your needs are. For cleanup crew, again, just like the substrate, need to tweak it a little bit because they're two different um, climates that they live in. So for Bearded Dragon, I have super worms in there, which is pretty awesome because you can buy them from almost any pet store as food for your Bearded Dragon. And you can just buy them, put them in, they'll burrow under the sand, um, live there. And I believe that the super worms, they take longer to become a beetle than what mealworms do. And then when the super worms become in their beetle form, they're not as appetizing to Bearded Dragons as the mealworms are. So that's why I went for super worms, but we'll see how they go. For my blue tongue skink, I have a mixture of springtails in there and then just basic garden worms that I got from Bunnings, both of which need moist soil to be able to survive. So I'm gonna have to see how that goes. It will be a little bit of a balancing act to keep them happy, but we'll see what happens. As far as plants goes, I just have a mixture of shrubs, grasses, and ground cover plants that are native to this area in Southeast Queensland. And I've just tried to separate them so that in the bearded dragon one, I've got the ones that can deal with the drier um, climate. And in my blue tongue skin enclosure, I've just got the ones that like water just a little bit more and kind of more of the ground cover type of plants and the ones that don't grow as tall. It's kind of just how I've split them up. They're mainly full sun plants or semi shade plants. So I'm gonna have to see how they go as far as lighting is concerned. I didn't do anything special to plant them in. I just took them out of their pot with their soil and then I you know, dug a little hole for them and placed them in and put the soil around them. You could, if you wanted to, try and put a protective layer around the plants if you've got a bit of dragon or a lizard that tends to dig. Um, my bearded dragon is digging a little bit in there, but so far she hasn't uprooted any plants or anything, but we'll just have to wait and see um, how that goes. Uh, for the lighting, I don't have any special lighting in there for the plants at the moment because the tanks are situated right next to a window and they get quite a bit of sun and I've got the UVB in there. Normally UVB is not enough for plants because they need the full colour spectrum of light as far as I know. However, with the window and the UVB being a fluorescent tube, I'm hoping that that will be enough. I'm gonna monitor them and see how they go, see if they get like too leggy and stuff. And if I do need to, I will just put a glow light or a grow light in the tank. Um, but again, I'm not gonna add that if I don't need to. For the Blue Tongue Skink, it's just a T10 UVB and a Philips flood light, which keeps the basking stone around like 35, 36 degrees. And then the Bearded Dragon, has a T5 UVB, which can be mounted quite far away. Specs are for around 40 to 65 centimeters. Also, it's probably worth mentioning just for decorations and stuff like that. For my skink, I kept it like darker logs because it's from a wetter environment. So I thought that made sense and it also matched his coloration a bit better. Um, that's just kind of aesthetics, I guess, but good to mention is something I didn't know, so I thought I'll just let you know, is that blue tongue skinks are different to bearded dragons in that they like to absorb their heat from their belly, from below. So they really like to have like a basking stone, just like a ceramic pan, just something like that, that is gonna heat up. Whereas if you owned a bearded dragon, you would probably know that you kind of get told the opposite, that they like to absorb their heat from above. And if you have something like a stone that gets too hot because of their high temperature requirements, it's gonna absorb a lot of the heat and then they can get burns and stuff underneath them. So for bearded dragon, I've kept the basking area log based. And then for my blue tongue lizard, I've kept the basking area more with stones. And blue tongues also like to burrow, but they really particularly like to burrow under stones and under like hard surfaces because that gives them some protection um, if anyone was to come along and stand on where they're burrowed. So really good idea to get like a tile or just a rock or something for your blue tongue skink. So that's kind of where I went with the differences there. And then that also mimics, you know, their 
behaviour in their natural environment and what their natural environment looks like. That's really everything that I have to say about these two bioactive setups. I'm really looking forward to see how they go. I love the look of them and the lizards seem like they're really happy in each of their enclosures too. So I've just got my fingers crossed and I'm hoping that the plants work out and that the cleanup crew um, fares okay and I'm really looking forward to seeing if this is a sustainable native bioactive setup that we have created for these lizards. As always, if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. Um, comment down below what you thought about it. If you've got any questions, tips, recommendations, please comment and leave them below for other people to see or for me to see as well. And if you would like to see more of this content, please feel free to subscribe to the channel and I will post some more videos on here about I've got guinea pigs, I've got fish, I've got lizards, basically all animal related stuff is what it is at the moment. So if you would like to see more content, please do subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.